Good morning. It's my great pleasure on behalf of the World Federation for Ultrasound in Medicine and Biology to present on Ultrasound the Best. The agenda is the ultrasound language of the bowel, the bowel wall layers regarding the anatomical structures, mucosa, submucosa, muscle proper layer, transmural inflammation and infiltration, and the surroundings, the normal bowel wall layers, and the most frequent diseases, some eye catchers, and recommended reading. reading. The ultrasound language of the bowel wall layer structures has been published in three papers in ultrasound medicine biology, a Wiffump position paper on learning gastrointestinal ultrasound, in the how to perform paper in the World Journal of Gastroenterology, and the FSUMP papers on gastrointestinal ultrasound, examination techniques and specific diseases. Let us start with the bowel wall layers. Here you can nicely depict between the markers, the proximal part of a bowel wall layer in a symmetric thickening of the sigmoid colon. You can depict the mucosa, hypoechoic, submucosa, hyperechoic, and muscle proper layer quite nicely in the proximal part and the distal part of the bowel wall thickening. Here you can see that there is no layer structure, which can happen in infiltrative diseases, neoplastic diseases, but also in ischemic gastrointestinal diseases. Elastographic imaging can show as the only image modality that there is a homogeneous, as you can see here, totally blue, destructive process, which was caused by a neoplastic infiltration of the entire bowel wall. Pretty similar in computer tomography, you can see the bowel wall thickening in a high resolution but you cannot depict the individual bowel wall layers. Here, color Doppler imaging allows you the feeding vessels. You can see they penetrate the muscle proper layer. They are mainly concentrated in the submucosa and ultrasound the best, ultrasound the only one. You can not only depict the layer structure, but you can also depict vascularity and the submucosal vascularity of bowel wall thickening. This is not all. In the submucosa, you can depict the Doppler spectrum. And this is inflammation because it has a pretty high diastolic flow. This inflammation. Whereas if you have only systolic flow, it's a sign of ischemic disease. Again, in addition to B mode showing the ultrasound layers, mucosa, submucosa, muscle proper layer, color Doppler imaging, which shows the vessels, 
the feeding vessels and the vessels within the submucosa. Contrasonance ultrasound allows you to depict the perfusion pattern. And you can see right now where the arrow is displaying the submucosa enhancement. It's not muscle proper layer. It is less mucosa. It is the submucosa which shows all that contrast enhancement and wash out. Have a look to that real-time imaging. It's real-time, also unique for ultrasound. You can see the penetrating vessel next to the arrow in the muscle proper layer. You can see the submucosa is enhancing, not the muscle proper layer in that amount. And you can depict unique features of bowel wall thickening, of feeding vessels, penetrating muscle proper layer. And you can depict that the vascularity is within the submucosa. And this is shown by the perfusion pattern using contrasonance ultrasound. In ischemia, you see an asymmetric thickening, asymmetric thickening, and you see no enhancement at all. In an individual bowel wall layer, asymmetric thickening, destructive layer structures, no enhancement at all, and it's not nephrotoxic. So the uh, unique feature of contrasonal ultrasound is the diagnosis of acute ischemic bowel disease. Ultrasound the best. Ultrasound shows individual bowel wall layers, whereas CT and MRI shows bowel wall thickening as the entire structure. You can see the vessels within the submucosa, characteristic vascularity, and you see the certain enhancement pattern with penetrating vessels into the submucosa under real-time imaging. Real-time imaging is the other unique feature of ultrasound. And you also might recall the elastographic image of the destructive process, neoplastic destru destructive process, showing the entire infiltration of the bowel wall. No layer structure anymore to be determined. It's an eye-catching feature. Now we go into detail that we have not only like CT and MRI a thickening or normal bowel wall layer, we will go for segmental, asymmetric, disproportional, longitudinal, transversal views of certain bowel wall structures. Here you can see the lumen, the mucosa, submucosa, and you can see an asymmetric thickening. The lumen is displayed by air in the bowel uh, lumen um, and um, you see that asymmetric thickening which is typical for Crohn's disease might be seen in tuberculosis rarely in actinomycosis. Within that bowel wall layer you see the asymmetry also at a certain part of the bowel wall which is also an eye-catching feature of Crohn's disease. You can see by endorectal, endoluminal ultrasound the asymmetric involvement of a certain part of the entire bowel wall. This typical disproportional asymmetric thickening shows the typical features of Crohn's disease. The entire wall can be inflamed with some sort of loss of bowel wall structure and you can see that early transmural inflammation, early fistula formation in the surrounding tissue, which is also a unique specification of high resolution ultrasound. We might see the surrounding structures, fat infiltration, 
which are typically seen as an important sign in MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, and computer tomography. So in ultrasound, it's more the direct sign, whereas in CT and MRI, those indirect signs, like infiltration of the surrounding, are the predominant features. The fat cap, as you can see here, transmural reaction beyond the bowel wall and the fistula formation and abscess formation right on this part of the image. But ultrasound allows also the normal bowel wall you can see to determine the mucosa, submucosa, muscle proper layer with the inner part and the outer part, inner ring, outer longitudinal part and a septum within. Always look in the center of the uh, image. The other view is the luminal, which are the advantages of uh, MI and computer tomography with oral contrast agents and uh, how to measure. Measure always in the center. And you can see that in the terminal ilium, cecum, ascending colon, we have always um, the diameter of much less than two millimeters. It's 1.1 to up to 1.3 in those locations. Um, do not measure here, do not measure distally, do not measure distally in the center, do not measure distally to the right and to the left. Always measure in the center of the image where a dosed compression can give you reproducible data. In this case, you can see the sloughing, which is a typical sign of graft versus host disease in hematological treatment periods. Standardized measurement of the bowel wall has been also published and described. And um, we have to be aware that inflammation often starts within the submucosa, ultrasound the best. You can see that the serosa might be normal, as a surgeon told us, but you can see in appendicitis that the early inflammation was started in the submucosa. Contrasonance ultrasound, you can see the muscle proper layer, you can see the lumen of the appendix, it's less than six millimeters, ah, six millimeters. It is a mucosal with inflammation of the submucosa muscle proper layer. It's not thickened, as you can see with the arrow. And uh, the surgeon even didn't believe it was an inflammation, but the pathologist told, yes, there was inflammation in submucosa. Ultrasound, the best and the unique imaging modality to, so, to show such early signs. Ultrasound, the best, allows submucosal vascularity and perfusion imaging in bowel wall, in thickened bowel wall, in appendicitis. Let's go for an eye-catching feature, Menetrier's disease. You can see the large folds of the gastric mucosa. And you can see here that the muscle proper layer is intact that all that thickening belongs to mucosa submucosa. And you might be sure it's not an infiltrative process spreading beyond the intestinal gastric wall. Contrasonance ultrasound shows the enhancement from the outer to the inner parts. And nicely, you can see that vessels penetrating the muscle proper layer, as you can see here, in this real-time imaging mode. Ultrasound allows disease-specific intestinal wall layer involvement. And as we already have seen, this, it's destructive in neoplastic diseases. It might be destructive in ischemic diseases. But here you can see the uh, gastric carcinoma and the loss of layer structure quite nicely, even with that additional information of elastography. 
Esum has published on appendicitis, diverticulitis, if you are interested in more detail. How to find the appendix at the bottom of the cecum, where the tenia joins together, there's the appendix. You have always to differentiate from the terminal ilium. Ultrasound, the best, allows you not only to see the appendix, but also to show the mesappendix and the normal appendix if you have a little bit free fluid around. Ultrasound, the best, shows appendicitis, appendicitis at an early stage, I already showed. And it should be used as a first imaging method in children and in adults. And CT and MRI should be limited to incon inconclusive findings and difficult conditions. Ultrasound allows also real-time imaging of peridiverticulitis in an abscess formation. And as you can see here, you can see the individual air bubbles moving from the diverticulum, from the abscess to the lumen. And this unique feature, real-time, the individual air bubbles moving from one place to another. You can see free peritoneal air, sometimes only one air bubble, which hasn't been seen by any other imaging modalities. So resolution, real time are the advantages. The esophagus to the left in the cervical region, you can nicely depict the swallowing. Boom. And you see the swallowing act. And in the older one, you might depict by contrast enhanced ultrasound the Zenkas diverticulum retaining contrast agent to the left side of the cervical region. Eye catcher, uh, parasites. The luminal aspect, here you can see Escariasis, nicely depicted by endoscopy as well. X-ray is not so bad. You can see likewise the Ascarides uh, ingest luminal, the contrast agent. Another imaging example are gastrointestinal stroma tumors. You can see those from muscle proper layer. There are some vascularity. Contrast enhanced ultrasound allows you to depict the non-enhancing areas and the enhancing areas of GIST, which is a unique feature. And in such small tumors, ultrasound is the only imaging modality showing such amazing images and diagnostic features. There are more than 50 characteristic gastrointestinal diseases. They are shown in that continuous medical education report as shown here. There are two parts and a lot of examples of eye-catching features showing that ultrasound is sometimes like when art meets science. Ultrasound allows bowel wall layer structure determination of the mucosa, submucosa, muscle proper layer, the transmural early inflammation and the surrounding structures. It shows normal bowel wall layers in the normal bowel wall. And most gastrointestinal diseases have typical features which can be nicely depicted by ultrasound sometimes in a unique fashion, sometimes ultrasound, the best modality. Eye-catching features, I showed you some references for recommended reading. Thank you so much for attending this lecture and I'm more than happy to discuss with you open issues. I'm happy to receive your comments.